related to the rate of a reaction in class 11th you have studied the concept of law of mass action hope you remember so law of mass action states that the rate of a reaction is directly proportional to the product of molar concentration of the reactants raised to appropriate powers let us consider the general reaction of the type now according to law of mass action the rate of the reaction is directly proportional to the product of molar concentration of the reactants raised to their appropriate powers here the power of the molar concentration terms is same as the stoichiometric coefficients of the reactant here what is the stoichiometric coefficient of a that is a and stoichiometric coefficient of b is b now to write an equation between these two what we do we replace the proportionality sign by equal sign and we add a constant here the constant k is called as the rate constant we call it as the rate constant or it is also called as the velocity constant or specific reaction rate k is also called as specific reaction rate and this expression is called as the theoretical rate expression this is theoretical rate expression this is theoretical rate expression now you must know this law of mass action is a theoretical one and to write the theoretical rate expression for a given reaction it is very easy you must just to know the balanced chemical equation if you know the balanced chemical equation then you can write the theoretical rate expression for example if i consider a reaction where n2 plus 3h2 gives 2nh3 then if you apply law of mass action to this reaction we get the theoretical rate expression how to write the theoretical rate expression that is rate of a reaction is equal to k into you must take the product of molar concentration of the reactants and what is the stoichiometric coefficient of n2 that is 1 so power of n2 is 1 stoichiometric coefficient of h2 is 3 so the power of h2 is 3 one more example h2 plus i2 gives 2 h if you apply law of mass action to this we get the rate of the reaction is equal to k into molar concentration of h2 into molar concentration of i2 what is the stoichiometric coefficient of h2 it is 1 i2 is 1 so this is the theoretical rate expression so remember it is very easy to write the theoretical rate expression if you know the balanced chemical equation okay now listen carefully we can also write the rate expression by performing experiment let us assume that we have performed an experiment and we found that the rate of the reaction depends on mth power of the molar concentration of a and it depends on nth power of molar concentration of b and we conducted this experiment by changing the concentration of a and b over a wide range and based on the result let us assume that we wrote the rate expression as rate 
and we found that this rate depends on the mth power of the molar concentration of the reactant A and nth power of the molar concentration of reactant B. Now we can write it as dx by dt is equal to k into molar concentration of A to the power m and molar concentration of B to the power n. Now we determined the value of m and n based on experiment and this is the rate expression which we wrote based on experiment. So we call this as the experimentally determined rate equation or the rate law or rate equation. Here m and n has no relation with the stoichiometric coefficients a and b. m and n may be equal to a and b or may not be equal to a and b. Okay, to write the experimental rate equation for any given reaction, you must conduct the experiment by changing the concentrations of the reactants and you must find the value of m and n. Now, for this reaction, if I ask you to write the theoretical rate expression, then it is very easy. If you just know the balanced chemical equation, it is enough. But for the same reaction, if I ask you to write the experimentally determined rate equation, then the experimentally determined rate equation will not be same as the theoretical rate expression. Here, the power of n and power of H2 may not be equal to 1 and 3. So that we have to find out by performing experiment. Now let us see how to find the value of m and n experimentally by taking an example. Remember, this is the theoretical rate equation. This is experimentally determined rate expression or we call it as the rate law or rate equation. What is rate law? It is an expression that relates the rate of the reaction, rate constant and molar concentration of the reactants raised to some powers. Once again, I will repeat, the rate law is an expression which relates the rate of the reaction, rate constant and molar concentration of the reactants raised to some powers. Now let us see how to determine the value of M and N. For this, let us consider a reaction where A plus B gives some product. Now, first experiment, experiment number one. In the first experiment, what I will do is, I will take the molar concentration of A as 0 0.1 molar and molar concentration of B as 1 molar. The molar concentration of both A and B is taken as 0 0.1 molar. Now, let us assume that the rate of the reaction is bound to be R in the first experiment. Next, I will conduct one more experiment. In the second experiment, once again I will take the molar concentration of B is 0 0.1. 1 molar. I will not change the concentration of B, but I will change the concentration of A. I will just increase the molar concentration of A by two times. That is, I will just double the concentration of A. So, 0 0.1 into 2 is 0 0.2. I have just doubled the concentration of A. Now, since the concentration of B remains fixed, concentration of A is changed the rate of the reaction depends on the concentration of A only. So in the second experiment, whatever the rate I get, that will be the rate because of the concentration of A. And it is found that 
in the second experiment the rate of the reaction is 2r that is the rate is doubled now from this experiment what you will come to know is when the concentration of a is doubled the rate is also doubled it means that the rate of the reaction is depending on the first power of the molar concentration of a the rate depends on the first power of molar concentration of a i will explain this to you see it is very simple please try to understand this and you must and should understand this concept because it is very 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 important for competitive exams so i am explaining this in detail try to understand this let us assume that there is a reaction where a gives product and for this reaction let us take that the rate depends on the first power of molar concentration of a that is rate is equal to k into molar concentration of a to the power 1 now let us double the concentration of a just double the concentration of a second experiment when i double the concentration of a then this will become 2a to the power 1 this can also be written as 2 k a to the power 1 what is k a to the power 1 that is r so you get 2r when the concentration of a is doubled rate also gets doubled why the rate gets doubled it is because the rate depends on the first power of molar concentration of a next third experiment let us increase the concentration of a by three times then what we get we get 3 k into molar concentration of a to the power 1 that is 3 r now when the concentration of a is increased by three times rate also increases by three times when the concentration is doubled rate is doubled when the concentration is increased by three times rate increases by three times if you increase the concentration of a by four times rate increases by four times so when this will happen this will happen only when the rate depends on first power of molar concentration of the reactant if it depends on second power of molar concentration of the reactant if it depends on second power you see what will happen i will increase the concentration of a by two times i'll increase the concentration of a by two times what is 2 square 2 square is 4 k a to the power 2 what is k a to the power 2 it is r so what we get we get 4 r when the concentration of a is doubled rate increases by four times if the concentration of a is increased by three times then what happens to the rate k this three square is nine k a to the power two what is k a to the power two that is r so nine r when the concentration of a is increased by three times rate increases by nine times when it increases by two times rate increases by four times if you increase the concentration by four times then four square rate will increase by 16 times when this will happen only when the rate depends on the second power of molar concentration of a next if it depends on the third power 
now you increase the concentration of a by 2 times if you increase the concentration of the reactant by 2 times then the rate increases by 2 cube is 8 so the rate increases by 8 times if you increase the concentration by 3 times then the rate increases by 3 cube 27 times next finally last one let us assume that it depends on the zeroth power so what is rate rate will be equal to a raised to the power 0 is 1 so we get k now you increase the concentration of a by 2 times what happens to the rate the rate once again 2 a to the power 0 is 1 so once again you will get k that is r you increase it by 3 times once again you will get r that is the rate is independent of the concentration of the reactant you go on increasing the concentration of the reactant but the rate remains same so when this will happen this will happen only when the rate depends on the zeroth power of molar concentration of the reactant now try to understand this when you double the concentration of the reactant if rate also gets doubled when you increase the concentration by three times if rate also increases by three times then the rate depends on the first power of the molar concentration of the reactant next when you double the concentration of the reactant if rate increases by four times when you increase by three times if it increases by nine times for four times if it increases by 16 times then the rate depends on the second power of the molar concentration of the reactant next when you increase the concentration of the reactant by two times if the rate increases by eight times when you increase by three times it increases by 27 times then the rate depends on the third power of the molar concentration of the reactant when you go on increasing the concentration of the reactant if the rate doesn't change then rate depends on zeroth power now finally the last one you tell me you must tell me the value of m now okay i will increase the concentration of the reactant by four times i'll increase the concentration of the reactant by four times the rate will become two times when i increase the concentration of the reactant by four times rate becomes two times then what must be the value of m when it is 4 times, rate has not become 4 times. So, m is not equal to 1. When you increase the concentration by 4 times, the rate has not become 16 times. So, it is not equal to 2. Similarly, it is not equal to 3. And it is not equal to 0. Then what? Then the value of m is a fraction of, it is square root of 4, that is 2. Okay? This is how we will determine the value of m and n by performing the experiment now let us return back to this okay you must and should try to understand this when you understand these concepts and when you try to prepare for your competitive examinations you will definitely will appreciate what i am teaching okay if you are preparing for your board examinations based on some question and answer pattern type and you are willing to score good marks in board examination and if that is your aim of excellence then it is better don't listen to my classes only if you need to understand the concepts clearly then only you continue watching my videos okay now let us come back to this now you see when the concentration of a is doubled rate is doubled so the rate depends on the first power of the molar concentration of a the rate depends on the first power of the molar concentration of A. Next, I will conduct one more experiment. Here, in the third experiment, I will keep the concentration of A as 0.1 molar and I will change the concentration of B. I will just double the concentration of B then the rate is found to be eta 
Now the rate depends on the concentration of B. When the concentration of B is doubled, the rate increases by 8 times. When this will happen? When it is doubled, rate if it has to increase by 8 times, then it must be 2 cube, right? Doubled, you see, 2 to the power 1, whether it is 8? No. 2 to the power 2, whether it is 8? No. 2 to the power 3, whether it is 8? Yes. So, the rate depends on the third power of the molar concentration of B. So, this is how we will determine the value of M and N by performing the experiment. Okay. Now, for this reaction, we reduce product. The experimentally determined rate equation will be rate is equal to K into molar concentration of A to the power M into molar concentration of B to the power N, where M and N it's determined based on the experiment. And I have explained you how to find the value of M and N. Is this point clear to you? And this is called as the experimentally determined rate equation or rate law. Here afterwards, unless otherwise we specify, whenever we talk about rate, we will be talking about the experimentally determined rate equations only. Whenever we say rate law, we will be talking about the experimentally determined rate equation. Is this point clear? Next, we will discuss one more very important concept that is related to this chapter that is order of a reaction. Next, let us see what is meant by order of a reaction. Order of a reaction is defined as the sum of the powers of molar concentrations of the reactants obtained in an experimentally determined rate equation. Once again, I will repeat. Order of a reaction is defined as the sum of the powers of the molar concentrations of the reactants obtained in an experimentally determined rate equation. See, for this reaction, this is the experimentally determined rate equation. Now, you take the sum of the powers of the molar concentration of the reactant. What is the power of A? That is M. What is the power of B? That is N. You take the sum of these two. This sum will give you the overall order of the reaction. So, in this case, M is the order with respect to the reactant A. N is the order with respect to the reactant B. And M plus N is the overall order of the reaction. Is this clear? What is order of a reaction? Order of a reaction is defined as the sum of the powers of the molar concentrations of the reactant obtained in an experimentally determined rate equation. I will write the definition for you. If you want, you can note down. Order of a reaction is defined as the sum of the powers of molar concentration of reactants in an experimentally determined rate equation. Now, if we consider a general equation of this type and for this reaction, if the experimentally determined rate expression is this, then this is the experimentally determined rate equation, then M plus N is the overall order of this reaction and listen, M is the order with respect to the reactant A. And if you are asked what is the order of this reaction with respect to the reactant B, you must say N. What is the order with respect to the reactant A? You must say it is M. What is the overall order of the reaction? Then it is M plus N. Now, let us take few examples. In the first case, I have taken the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. You tell me what is the order of this reaction? If you say it is 2, then you have not understood what I have explained till now. In order to tell the order of a reaction, first thing is that you must and should know the experimentally determined rate expression. And you see, there is no other way other than 
memorizing these reactions because you or me conduct can't conduct the experiment inside the classroom and find out on what power the rate of the reaction depends right so there is no other way other than biting all these reactions for the first reaction the rate is given by the experimentally determined rate expression is k into molar concentration of h2o2 to the power of 1 if you write the theoretical rate expression then the power is 2 then the order is not 2 because the experimentally determined rate expression for this is dx by dt is equal to k into molar concentration of h2o to the power of 1 now what is the sum of the powers of the molar concentration of the reactant here it is 1 so order of this reaction is 1 until and unless the experimentally determined rate equation is not given you can't tell the order of the reaction remember now if i ask you what is the order of this reaction so is it to no for this you need to know the experimentally determined rate equation this reaction it appears to be a second order reaction but while discussing the molecularity of this reaction we have seen the mechanism of this reaction and there we have discussed the slowest step is called as the rate determining step so when you write the experimental rate equation for the slowest step the sum of the powers of the molar concentration terms involved in the slowest step that is the rate determining step will give you the order of the reaction so for this reaction the experimentally determined rate e expression is dx by dt is equal to k into molar concentration of n2o5 to the power of 1 so here also the order is 1 for this the experimentally determined rate expression is dx by dt is equal to k into hi to the power of 2 this is the experimentally determined rate equation therefore the sum of the powers of the molar concentration terms is 2 therefore this reaction is a second order reaction and the order is 2 in this case dx by dt is equal to k into molar concentration of n2o to the power 3 into o2 sorry 2 o2 power 1 in this case you see the experimentally determined value is same as the stoichiometric coefficient even in this case that's why i said m and n may or may not be equal to a and b so this is the experimentally determined rate equation for this so what is the sum of the powers of molar concentration of the reactant it is 2 plus 1 therefore order is 3 in this case The experimentally determined rate equation for this is see what is the order with respect to h2 it is 1 what is the order with respect to br2 it is off so what is the overall order overall order is 1 plus of that is equal to 3 by 2 these two are first order reactions this is second order reaction this is a third order reaction this is a fractional order reaction we can take few more examples h2 plus cl2 in the presence of sunlight gives to hcl for this the experimentally determined rate expression is See, the order with respect to H2 is 0. The order with respect to Cl2 is 0. So, what is the overall order? Overall order is 0. We can take one more example. That is the thermal decomposition of ammonia in the presence of molybdenum or tungsten. So this reaction you see if you write the theoretical rate expression for this it appears like this.
so this is not a second order reaction when you conduct an experiment you find that the rate depends on the zeroth power of the molar concentration of ammonia therefore the order of this reaction is zero even if you take the thermal decomposition of hydrogen iodide in the presence of gold as a catalyst the rate is found to depend on the zeroth power of the molar concentration of hi see here in this case this is a second order reaction but in the presence of gold the same reaction will become a zero order reaction now in the previous class we have discussed about molecularity of a reaction and we studied that molecularity of a reaction cannot be zero cannot be fraction negative or more than three but the order of a reaction can be more than three it can be a fraction it can be zero and it can be even negative so based on the order the reactions are classified into different types like first order reaction second order reaction third order reaction fractional order reaction and zero order reaction now what is a first order reaction a reaction in which the rate is directly proportional to the first power of the molar concentration of the reactant in an experimentally determined rate equation if the rate is directly proportional to the first power of the molar concentration of the reactant then it is called first order reaction if the rate is directly proportional to the second power of the molar concentration of the reactant then it is called second order reaction if the rate is directly proportional to the third power of the molar concentration of the reactant then it is called third order reaction if the rate is directly proportional to the fractional power of the molar concentration of the reactant then it's called fractional order reaction if the rate is independent of the molar concentration of the reactant then it is called zero order reaction in zero order reactions i told you that if you go on increasing the molar concentration of the reactant the rate will remain same there will be no change in rate whenever you go on increasing the molar concentration of the reactant if the rate doesn't change then it is a zero order reaction so how you will define a zero order reaction the reaction in which rate is independent of the molar concentration of the reactant so these are the few examples for zero order reaction first order reaction second order reaction and third order and fractional order reactions so in the next class we will see some of the problems will solve some of the problems related to the order of a reaction which is very important for competitive examinations before we solve those problems first you must go through this and you must try to understand the concept of the order of a reaction very well only then you will be able to solve the problems okay this is all for this session thank you